Hey, how's it going? Um, I wanted to make a video on my Honda um, doing a Street Fighter build on it. Um, you know, before I started doing it, I was looking at a whole bunch of different Street Fighters, and there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, like, in particular, like, my generation of uh, uh, CBR 600RR. Um, there are some, but uh, the pictures were awful um, for some of them. Uh, but I don't know, there just wasn't a whole lot of information. So I just wanted to make a video, show what I was doing, um, and, uh, you know, put the things that I had trouble figuring out or took me some time to figure out, put it all in one place in a video. So if you have a, uh, CBR and you're wanting to do a street fighter build, uh, maybe it'll be less intimidating for you, uh, or just save you some time, uh, and uh, hopefully I cut all this stuff out because I say uh, a lot, so sorry about that if I don't cut it out. But, you know, just put it all in one place, um, let it be out there. And I'm also doing things a little bit differently. Uh, for example, like I did not want to give up the gauges, whereas a lot of the bikes I was seeing did not have gauges, um, which not entirely necessary, but they're nice to have, especially when you've modified them. Um, I've got, uh, I don't know if they, they pronounce it, uh, Tripage or Tripage or whatever. But there's, a, there's a really cool uh, company that makes a lot of cool stuff for a lot of different bikes, uh, in particular the CBR. Uh, but I sent my gauge cluster off to them and they, they uh, put like a blue LED panel in it. And uh, I also had them uh, put a gear indicator and stuff in there. So uh, I spent a decent amount of money on the gauge cluster. I wanted to keep it. Um, and like I said, it's just nice to have. And if I ever did sell a bike, which probably won't, but if I ever did, uh, I'm sure someone else would want to have the gauge. Um, another key thing that I wanted to kind of, a goal that I had was to make everything reversible. Um, I didn't cut anything uh, major. Um, everything should bolt right back up. The one place that I failed at that, and it was by choice, uh, was the harness. Um, you could totally leave the harness, um, like coming, there's a, there's a connector to the right of the gas tank. Uh, there's like 40 pins or something like that. But, uh, that, that connector, you could totally leave it completely stock. Um, and I actually w was about to cut every single one of those wires and solder them, uh, and basically just hardwire it so it was shorter. Uh, cause I do not want any wire sh showing, um, I want it to be as clean as possible and it's going to take me some time to get everything as clean as I'd like, but you know, it's a work in progress. So this video is not going to be, uh, the end, but, uh, I wanted to make a video while, um, everything was exposed, uh, and like half done. So that way I could say this wire goes right here. Cause if it was completely done, I just, I'd be like, okay, so imagine, you know, yeah, whatever. So you get to see everything. Uh, so I thought it'd be a little more helpful. Uh, so that's the one exception is the harness, uh, back to that. Sorry. I ramble sometimes. Um, but back to the harness, um, I'm cutting my harness up, but, uh, I got on the internet and, uh, there was a crap ton of them on eBay for like 30 to $50. Um, I actually bought one. I don't know why I bought one just so that way I have it in case I wanted to revert it completely back to stock. Uh, and that was before. I decided to not cut that 40 pin and I'll show you what I did instead. So I just wasted like fucking $40, which is whatever. But, um, you know, so if you do want to cut the harness, uh, it's only 40 bucks to replace it, but, uh, there are ways around that. So I guess I'll go ahead and take you over to the bike and show you some of the stuff that I've done. Take two. Uh, so here's the bike. Um, obviously street fighter i uh started by disassembling the entire front of the bike uh the nose piece you know whatever you want to call it where the gauge cluster headlights all that stuff is um i'm not going to explain how to do that there's tons and tons of videos uh out there for you to find to tell you how to do that uh, but uh key things uh the headlights uh, there's tons of different options on headlights you can get like whole assemblies that have uh, like the windscreens built into them uh, some of them are cool, some of them aren't, uh, but it's all it's all for personal preference. Um, but I just went ahead. I like the very simple dual headlights. I got those on Amazon. 
I don't remember how much they were, but they weren't expensive. They were like between twenty and fifty dollars, um, and they, I don't know, they look nice, uh, and they work. They're actually pretty bright, uh, especially the high beam, uh, which I'll show you how I have them wired up in here, here in a bit. But uh, I, that that was the start. That was the first thing I bought is the headlights. Um, so once I got those in, uh, bolted them up. They have they come with the, these universal fork brackets. They're kind of they're, they're a pain in the butt to get on there and honestly i didn't take super good care of them so uh if you see here i used a pair of pliers to squeeze them together uh and i got scuff marks on that side this was the pain in the butt side and i don't know if it's because i bent them or not uh, the other side i don't have those marks and if i do they're very faint um but you know your, your mileage may vary i don't really care very much uh, so then the next thing was, uh, like I said, the gauge cluster. Um, so I work at a custom audio stereo shop. Uh, so we've got these, uh, they're like, uh, they're for mounting, uh, stereos or like reinforcing them. Like there's some cars that like don't, like you put stereo in it and it wobbles around or whatever. So we use these to reinforce it. Uh, so I just grabbed one of those and it was real long. So I just kind of bent it starting on one side, kind of gauged where I wanted it to be, um, and, uh, bent it, you know, got this weird, like, 90 degree bend in it, it doesn't look super professional, but, you know, it's kind of the concept of a Street Fighter, is it's gonna look a little rough, uh, you could totally make it show-worthy if you wanted to, but, uh, you know, that's just kind of how I did it, just bend and cut, simple enough, but you can get those, uh, for sure on the internet maybe wally world sells them uh if they don't just go to like any local audio shop and ask for them they'll probably sell them to you for dirt cheap i don't think i don't, I don't think they cost very much uh but that is what i did for the gauge cluster on the back of the gauge cluster there was only there's three uh mounting points stock uh there's two on the top and then there's one in the center on the bottom um i only have that one screw in the bottom it's pretty on there though it does wobble around i know that screw is a little bit loose so i could tighten it but it's it's on there um i haven't driven it yet so i don't know how wind's gonna do with it like this but uh, i was gonna get to this later but i am going to put a small windscreen on it uh, but i'll cover that later on but there is going to be windscreen don't know how I'm going to mount it yet, but determined to figure it out, and where there's a will, there's a way. So we'll figure it out later. Uh, the next thing is wiring the headlights. Uh, that was pretty simple. Uh, it took me way too long to figure out the high beam. Um, it's like the simplest thing in the world, but it, it took me like 45 minutes searching on the internet before I just started looking at the bike and just obviously it was like, oh, that's it's right there. Um, but there's going to be this, this is the, like 40 pin connector. So normally this is hanging out over here on the side, like going, running down the length of the bike. Um, and you're going to have a bunch of different connections on here. Um, so mine's not going to be in the same place as yours, but you're going to have the same connections, uh, for the most part. Yeah. You're going to have the same connections. So this is... Uh, your center running light, um, normally on the nose, which you find mine, I've got it scattered all over the place, is this light right here. Um, so that would be the black two pin. Uh, green, uh, pretty constant theme. That is pretty much always going to be your ground, at least in relation to the lights that I figured out. Uh, so when in doubt, green is ground, okay? Um, and then the other color is gonna be, it's gonna vary. On this particular one, black connector, two pin, uh, green ground, uh, and then the white and black is going to be your positive. You can wire that up to any lights you want. Um, right now, I've got them wired to these red lights uh, that I've actually stuck inside of my lever handles. They don't catch on anything and I've routed them. Um, but you, you can wire them up to whatever lighting you wanted to do. Um, the headlights super bright but there you go so you can use them you cannot use them totally up to you 
Next connector, um, this is going to be, that's return signal, uh, but we'll, we'll cover that later because I haven't done that yet. Your, okay, this one was interesting. The uh, tip sensor. I don't know the, the proper name. I'm, I'm a car guy, not really a mechanic on bikes and stuff, but in uh, the nose, um, and I don't remember exactly where it's at, but it bolts up right here. We take this piece off, which this is like your, uh, it's going to be your Ram Air, or, or maybe, I don't know, on a car they call that Ram Air. But that's your air intake, uh, your gauge cluster mounts right here. And then in the nose piece is a tip sensor. Um, when I first pulled that off, uh, I, I disconnected it, and um, the bike wouldn't start. And the reason why it wouldn't start is because the fuel uh, pump wasn't, uh, wasn't engaging. And so, for a second, I thought, you know, hey, that's the, uh, it has to do something with the fuel pump, the fuel pump relay or something, but it, it wasn't. Uh, but uh, on it, it says up. And so I was like, what happens if you turn it upside down when the bike's running? So I plugged it in, turned the bike on uh, with it up, and then I turned it upside down, and the bike turned off. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. It's, the, it's you know, for if you crash, the bike turns itself off. Um, you got two options on that. You can either... Find a new place to mount it. I'm not an expert. I don't know if there's somewhere super particular it needs to be. I imagine it needs to be near the front of the bike and up because they had it in the nose for a reason. Um, so find somewhere that's good to put it. I didn't really want to mess with that and uh, I don't even plan on crashing. So what I did is repinned this. If you look at this, it's not going to look like yours if yours is stock. The red wire is going to be on the opposite side of the green wire. So if you take a small flathead screwdriver and stick it inside of that pin, if it would focus, uh, you cannot see it. But if you stick a flathead screwdriver between that metal piece, there's a, there's a black piece, a black tab on the bottom of it. And you can uh, just kind of screw on the screwdriver and uh, kind of slightly tug at the wire, don't yank it, uh, but slightly pull at it, uh, and eventually it'll come loose. And that would depen it. So you're gonna depen the yellow, which is once again normally in the middle, uh, and the red, and you can pin them together. And then you can stick any piece of metal that you want inside of these two. Uh, that is if you want to make it harder on yourself, I don't know why I did it that way, I just did. Um, you could totally just cut the red and the green and splice them together. Put a crimp cap on them, solder them together. Uh, you know, if you're feeling super adventurous, you can just electrical, you twist them together and electrical tape them. Uh, I don't really care, it's your bike. But the red and the green need to be tied together somehow. And for some reason I chose to do it this way. Judge me, don't judge me, I don't know. Whatever you wanna do. Uh, where's my next connector? We already covered that one. Uh, and then, okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about the turn signals. So the turn signal, um, you're gonna have a blue one and you're gonna have an orange one. Um, my dumbass uh, put the orange one on the right side of the bike because I've got some of the wires just hanging on the bike. And so I kept testing it and I couldn't figure out why uh, none of my wires were working properly. Like I could get the running light to work, which is red. Uh, well, actually, no, 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 ignore that. That's aftermarket. That was on the bike before I bought it. Um, the running light on this connector is the uh, orange stripe. And then your turn signal to actually flash it is going to be uh, orange uh, solid. And then, like I said, with lights, green is ground. So if you're using like a simple LED, uh, like just a tube, two pin uh, and you don't want running lights on it you can just connect it to the solid orange if you want solid orange and then your ground is going to be green uh if you've got three uh pin connect or three wired light like a like a factory light or an aftermarket turn signal light uh you can connect all three and it would work normally uh so that you may or may not want to modify that it's up to you but there's that. Uh, so the blue is going to be on the right side and orange is going to be on the left side. 
uh, where is my headlight uh, pin? Oh, that's right, I cut them out. So the only thing that I cut uh, was the headlight pins. Um, so there's gonna be a high beam on the left side of the bike uh, when you're riding the bike. So that I'm calling that the left side. I'm gonna try to be consistent. Um, and then on the right side of the bike, uh, where your right hand's hitting the throttle, throttle side of the bike, maybe that makes more sense, um, is gonna be your low beam. Uh, you're gonna have two wires. Green is your ground, like I said. I'm gonna keep saying that. And uh, then your uh, blue wire is going to be your positive. Um, usually with lights, they're not super sensitive. Uh, you can wire them backwards and uh, they'll still work. Uh, most of the time, uh, it will be dimmer. So to get the maximum polarity and all that good stuff out of your headlights, wire them the right way. Blue or greenish ground because, you know, I don't know, green like the earth or something. I don't, I don't know. There's more blue on the earth, though. I think it's more. I don't know. So there's that. There's those two. Um, as far as riding goes, the reason why I'm not having to cut my harness is uh, CBRs are super freaking awesome, and they have plastic covering all this crap, whereas, like, on a Jixxer or Harley or anything else in the world, um, it's the gas tank is metal, and that's what you see is what you get. Uh, but I've got uh, the gas tank and the, the side panels taken off of the bike to expose all of this. So once you expose all this, um, you've got a lot of space between the gas tank and all this forward, and then you've got a little bit of space between where the fairing goes and uh, where your air intake and ECU and all that stuff is. So what I'm doing is, uh, first of all, I cut all this uh, thing, I, I cut and unwrapped all the electrical tape. The reason why I did that is to make it more flexible. The electrical tape that they had on there was super stiff. And I'm going to rewrap it. Uh, I'm undecided on what. I've got this interior, because like, there's, there's a lot of different types of like electrical tape and stuff. But I've got this really soft uh, cloth tape. And I've got this exterior stuff. Using this exterior stuff as much as possible because more of wet weather resistance uh, than cloth tape. But depending on where you're putting the cloth tape, should be fine. Uh, since I'm hiding all of this under the gas tank, pretty sure cloth tape would be fine, uh, but I might just loom it or something. Not sure I'll get back to you on that. Um, but uh, like I said, just to make it more flexible so that way I get this bend. Because it would have been a pain in the butt doing it with the tape. So instead of it going running across the bike, I've got it wrapped all the way up and all my wires are gonna be tucked up under the handlebar uh, between the forks. Um, there is this super nifty wire holder um, somewhere in here. I'm having a hell of a time trying to show you where it is, but there's uh, just an Allen head uh, bolt. You pull that out um, and there's, uh, there's only like two wires in it, but there's this big old rubber grommet. Um, because I'm super adventurous, I'm going to take that rubber grommet out uh, and uh, yeah, I could have I could have moved the handlebars and showed you is this thing. Um, and I'm just gonna route as many wires as I can through that to try to keep less movement. Uh, so when you do turn the handlebars, you're not snagging any wires or anything like that. Uh, uh, these red wires, uh, these are my high beam, low beam, and ground is consistent for both of them. Uh, so I've got like a horseshoe shape between these where the connectors would be and uh, have that go into that. So as far as my uh, headlights go, I uh, don't mean to blind you, so I'll try to hold that side, but I've got my low beam uh, on the left and uh, the high beam on the right. Uh, these headlights are pretty cool. Um, they've got uh, four wires coming off of them. So you've got lots of options on how you wanna uh, set them up. So you could do high and low on both of them or one and another. I like the look of just running with one headlight and having the option of having both go. So that's why I wired it the way that I wired it. It's just personal preference. But these headlights you can do low beam and high beam at the same time. So totally up to you. That's just the way that I wired it.
what's next? I mean, that's kind of it for now. Uh, so, you know, kind of the biggest thing was uh, mounting the gauge cluster where I wanted to do it, how I wanted to do it. Uh, so that's, that's what I chose to do. And uh, as far as the wiring goes, most of the time I spent on the lighting and uh, unwrapping stuff, soldering everything. Uh, which there wasn't a whole lot to do, but I redid it like four or five times because I made simple mistakes or I just didn't like where it went or I uh, had put it on the other side of something that I was like, oh, you know, that's on the wrong side now. So I had to cut it and resolder it on the other side. So I would say save yourself some time know where your connectors are, know what the colors are going to, and uh, have a game plan as to where you're routing your wires. Where is your connector gonna end up? Mine's gonna end up uh, somewhere shoved up in here. That's the final placement placement of this connector. Because um, it routes nicely around here, and this uh, is snug up against the frame of the bike uh, which will not prevent any problems so that's what I figured out so far uh, these connectors totally left them alone this one and then the brown one I'm gonna call that brown maybe it's red I'm gonna call it brown um, these are just gonna snug up against here and hide underneath my piece of plastic um, and once again they are already being routed through that uh, I'm gonna pull that off take the grommets out and around even more wires through that. Um, oh, another cool thing about these lights is uh, they have a fourth pin that uh, is uh, uh, like parking lights. I don't really know how to wire them uh, really uh, and make them useful because they're, they're not noticeable when the lights are on. Because I, I played with them and tested with them. If the headlights are on, you don't see them. So they're only gonna be useful if you wire them to your low beam and then set either low or high beam to high beam. So that way you could run no headlight or parking light and have your normal lights. So, but then you wouldn't have high beams or you wouldn't have low beams. So, you know, with that, once again, personal preference, do whatever you want to do, but it's pretty nifty. I like the idea of it. If there was a third option, like, you know, cars have, uh, it would be super cool, but uh, on a bike, kind of limited. So, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, just I guess as a bonus, and I don't know if I'll cut this out or not because I'm, it's already like 19 minutes. Um, but plans, I'm going to, I'm using, um, I'm going to use a uh, windscreen from a, uh, an X, a Buell XB uh, 12S, which I believe all of the XBs, like the XB9 and whatnot, I think they all use a very similar, if not the exact same windscreen. But it looks good. It looks Street Fighter-ish. Um, I think the width and everything's gonna fit great right here. Um, and I probably wouldn't have run one a windscreen if I wasn't using the gauge cluster. But um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tape this up better so that way it's less exposed. But it's still going to be exposed. So if you ever get caught in rain or something like that, um, I don't really want water and moisture going straight shot into the gauge cluster. And I think it'll look nice. Um, so it'll sit kind of like that, which from the angle uh, of riding the bike, roughly, you know, here-ish, um, you don't have like a perfect view of it, but you have totally enough view of the gauge cluster. And with that windscreen sitting here, it'll kind of give it some shade. So it'll be, you know, stock-ish as far as like the glare and all that stuff. So that's the idea. Um, another thing that I did not like about what I got going on is the uh, brake reservoir, which I didn't do a whole bunch of research, but did a Google search of uh, uh, you know brake reservoirs. What I would really like to do is do something like 
what the Harley's got. Uh, and I know um, that the uh, CBR, like, F1 through 4 or whatever, or the older CBRs, they have a, a, a screw-on uh, system. But I believe that that is not just a reservoir. That is the reservoir and the master cylinder. So a little bit different uh, than just having basically a little cup. Because uh, literally this is just a cup. Uh, all, of, all the magic happens elsewhere. So, anyways, did a little bit of a search, and uh, there's a company that's either just, like, going out of business, or they're just discontinuing the product, but they sell these, like, a little aluminum ones, and they, I believe, their, their picture sucked, but it looks like, instead of being, like, up in the air, uh, it mounts somewhere right here, which would look a lot better, because uh, I really hate how... You know, you've got like this straight bar action, uh, and then this thing is just like, hey, what's up? Floating in the air. I hate that. So, gonna gonna try that out. Uh, that reservoir, uh, which I'll, I'll tell you what the company was or where I got it and all that crap uh, once I get it, but, uh, cause I don't, I don't remember, I don't know. I just, I bought it like 15 minutes ago. But uh, we'll see how that looks, I think it'll look cool better than that right uh so that's like the two next big things street fighter ish i'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff to the bike but it's not pertinent to what we're doing so you know good luck and uh hopefully i'll make another video and uh hopefully it didn't suck au revoir hey so i wasn't uh uh planning on continuing the video but uh, it's like almost uh it's like 8 a.m now been up all fucking night working on this bike but um i just wanted to show i just figured it'd be better to show what it looks like all wrapped up and routed uh in this video rather than starting another video like you know kind of categorize it and this one be about mostly wiring that's kind of the main thing uh that i'm trying to help with um other than like the other tidbits that I gave, but uh, wiring was like the most time consuming thing. Um, in the last like couple of hours, I've actually been uh, working on non, uh, non street fire specific stuff. Um, like uh, I, I have LEDs, the cool kid lights wired around my bike because I'm a cool kid. Um, and uh, they, uh, they like when if you just buy a kit, which I'm, you know, I got it, I got it from work, but uh, the kit that they, uh, that I got, the the fucking wires are like freaking super long. Like I I, I, I would think that maybe it was also for a car because that would make sense as to why the cables were so long. But literally, like on the package, it's like four motorcycles. So I don't I don't know what motorcycle is that that long or needs that much cable, but. Anyways, uh, before, for like the last, I don't know, I've had them in there for like four to six months. Um, and whenever I was installing them, I did not feel like cutting and soldering every single wire. Because each light has four uh, lights. Um, and so you have to cut and solder each one. There's eight lights. So eight times four equals a lot of wires. Uh, so I just, I just finished wrapping those up. I'm about to solder them. But... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to go to work soon. So I uh, figured I would stop what I was doing and show you the bike, uh, show you the, the wiring. So uh, I might, I don't know if I'll record this, re-record this or not, cause I uh, got on a tangent. Sorry about that. So back at the bike. Um, if you noticed, it is much uh, nicer to look at, uh, doesn't give me anxiety as it did before. Uh, so this right here, this is where our main, uh, harness, that 40 pin, and I keep calling it the 40 pin just to be consistent, but I, I don't know how many pins are actually in it, so I don't, I don't care. Uh, but, uh, this is our main connector right here. So I used that cloth tape, um, uh, nothing in here was wet, I mean, it's dusty, I don't, I don't know, I, I, I wasn't super worried about moisture or anything like that being so far up in here. So cloth tape, 
shouldn't really hold any moisture or anything like that. So, uh, you know, do I recommend it? Yeah, I do. Um, if you're doing this. So that's routed right up here. And then uh, just to be safe, I actually used uh, the outdoor tape on the last uh, couple of inches, like starting about here, going around the uh, connector. And I went ahead and did the, uh, both the front and the back of the connector entirely in um, outdoor tape just to like be extra safe and be extra secure. But I mean, I, I wasn't worried about it, honestly. I had like, at first I, I just left it like completely untaped. And, uh, but then the OCD in me, I mean, like I do this for a living, like remote starts and I mean, wires are like my, but that's, that's what I do. So I don't know. I was like, man, I need to go back and do that. So I went back and did it just, just to do it. Um, and then from there, uh, I went ahead and, uh, went and did what I told you I was going to do. Use this grommet, uh, or it's not, it's not a grommet. It kind of works like a grommet almost though. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, but anyways, it's like the uh, clip, this retainer uh, for the wires, uh, pulled that bolt off, which kind of tight if you're using just like an Allen key like I am, but uh, pull that off. And uh, there was, uh, like I said, those, uh, there's like, there's two grommets, not one. I thought there was two, but this is, this is one of them. Uh, but it's just a grommet that already has a slot in it with uh, some electrical tape. So I just took a knife, cut the electrical tape off, ripped off that grommet, uh, both of them, which allowed room for two more harnesses, not the five that I needed. Uh, so this one's still kind of hanging out, but I also have some of that hanging out here too. Uh, I, don't, I don't really mind uh, the black and red wire. And I even tried to like kind of shove it up under there. Nah, it's it was it was a no go. It's just it just kind of is what it is. Um, I might come back and do it later. Honestly, I've got this really nice looking uh, black and blue loom at work that I will probably at some point come back here, cut it, loom it all the way to the front, uh, going off into its different directions, and then come back to it. I think that would look nice. Uh, if you're gonna have exposed wire, uh, it's nice to loom it and stuff, but if you don't care, I don't care, it's whatever, it's your bike. You do whatever you want. So, there's that, and then I just went crazy with the zip ties, um, used uh, some more of the outdoor stuff and more of the indoor stuff, just kind of depending on how easy it was to work with the wire. Um, the more bends it needed, uh, or the lazier I felt, the more, uh, cloth tape I used, um, but anywhere that uh, was like a straight shot like this, um, I used uh, outdoor tape. But honestly, you're probably fine using whatever the heck you got. Um, if you got some yellow electrical tape, use it. If you got purple, use it. It doesn't matter. Um, the only connectors that I left open are my turn signals. Uh, which I do, I have not had turn signals on this bike in a long time because I've actually been running without these fairings, the big ones, uh, on the sides. Uh, for a long time, I've run all the other fairings, but uh, I just I just never put them on. So I, because of that, there's not a place to mount the, the turn signal. So I've just not had front turn signals. I've had a rear, but not, not the back, or not the front. Um, I would like to have turn signals, though. Uh, so... Uh, I got on Amazon was just kind of like looking at options and they make these like rings that go around here. Um, I have no idea if I'm going to like them or not. They might be super cheesy. They might not. Um, if they're cheesy, if they're too cheesy, I'll probably not use them. Um, but if they're like half decent, I'll probably use them just so that it's something. Cause I don't really know where I want. I don't know where else I would want to mount them. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to try that. Uh, so you might see that in a future video if I do make another one. Uh, so that's why I left these here. Um, I could leave them hanging out, but I know that if I do leave it hanging out, I'm going to want to come back and tuck it up anyway. So I'm just going to leave them shoved up in here for now. It's not a big deal to pull off the uh, plastic fairing, especially if you are not running the mid fairings. Not that big of a deal. It's literally... Uh, it just, it's just a couple, I think it's three, it's three bolts and then two 
plastic screw retainer plastic pieces of crap underneath the seat um they do not work i don't know why any like on cars and motorcycles like any anything automotive should not use those uh plastic screws they don't they don't work i don't know why manufacturers have been using them for years but whatever that's tangent whatever i'll stop um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. I'll show you the other side. Oh, another thing. So I didn't really go into detail on this because there wasn't a whole lot to change or move. Um, like like I, already, I already had already mentioned that the headlight harness right here um, for the high beam, uh, usually it's, it's, I've got it routed, rerouted going up. So it comes down with this uh, and then runs across the bike and uh, shoots off into the to the to where the fairing would be because there's usually like a boat buttload of plastic right here um, so it runs into that um, take all that off uh, pull that back throw it up over here and then you can uh, just route it in with whatever headlight you're using if you're even using it. If you're not using it, you can just shove it up under the tank. Don't even worry about it. Uh, another thing is there was a plastic clip. This one right here, this big one, uh, was right here. And I'm, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet, but I'm gonna do something. Even if it's something as simple as uh, just pull it off and paint it, uh, you know, this along with the brackets. Uh, I'll probably loom these wires. Uh, maybe I'll relocate this whole thing I don't know where yet. I haven't really spent too much time on it, but I'm gonna do something with it. Um, but uh, but I wanted to get as much uh, up under the gas tank as possible. This stuff uh, is not gonna fit under the gas tank. Uh, I keep calling this piece of plastic a gas tank. Uh, bear with me, I'm sorry. I'm, I haven't slept in a long time. But I'm gonna shove all that I can up there. And this, I don't believe I'll be able to get. I mean, I think if I extended the wires, Honestly, I might be able to shove it up in there, but this does look like a heat sink. I don't know what it is. Once again, I'm not a motorcycle mechanic, um, but having a heat sink usually means that it gets hot and needs to be cooled. So I'll do some research on that and figure that out. Because it'd be nice to just have, you know, some frame. But it doesn't look terrible, especially if you painted it and loomed it. So I don't know, we'll figure it out. So that's what this side looks like. Um, the only, I on this side, and that's another thing, is if I had known uh, that I was not going to have enough room for the red wire on that side, I would have put it on this side, because this, uh, this has plenty of room. I could have I left this grommet on here and just added my wire to it. It would have been a tight fit, but it would have it worked. Um, so there's that. The only wire that I added to that was uh, what's going on my gauge cluster to make my uh, uh, gear indicator. The, one, the thing that just went one through six, that's not stock. Uh, and that I've got routed along with uh, two LEDs. Uh, one is, is right now just shoved up in the radiator, you can kind of see it. Um, and then the other one I think is on the other side no i have it right here no i don't i don't remember which one it is but i've got two leds along with the gear indicator uh kind of zip tied and routed along with uh, all this crap uh going up and then i've got the gear indicator going out because the connector was too big and i didn't feel like cutting and soldering it um and it's like permanently attached to in, into the gauge cluster so it was either cut and solder or just go around i chose to go around uh, whereas the two LEDs, uh, they had uh, connectors on them, but uh, I cut them all off. And there was a giant rat's nest of wires right here, uh, which is now right there. That was all just crammed under my seat. Um, so I cut every single one back and spliced them all together. Uh, and I'm uh, going to put this one connector. So instead of having like what feels like 50 connectors under there, it's just going to have one going to uh, the main power. But that's pretty much what I've done all freaking night. I think I've been at this since, uh, man, at least uh, seven, eight o'clock. And 
I got work in about an hour, which is uh, about 9.30, 10 o'clock. So if you got any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, hopefully it's not too long before I make another video. I apologize for this being super long, but I feel like the information was decent enough that uh, if you are doing this project, which some of you probably aren't, but if you are, um, I would have probably watched the whole thing. Uh, it would have saved me a bunch of time, uh, you know, 45 minutes or so uh, versus a few hours of struggle busing, you know. So, whatever. Au revoir, again, for real this time.